This is, Go ahead. Well, this is going to be so free form, it may not even exist. Um, the reason for that is we're all here. It's Sunday. This is the last day of the show. It's 4 o'clock. And things are going to shut down in an hour. We're fried. You're probably. And blind. <laughs> These lights. <laughs> well, this is being broadcast. Is there? Oh, okay. All right. So I'm just going to look down a lot. Um, uh, we're, as I said, fried from three days of very wonderful. No, no, no. Three days of convention. Okay, but four days of fans. <laughs> She's big on revisionism. <laughs> so the title is ElfQuest The Final Quest. And you probably have questions. So rather than spend a whole lot of time talking about the final quest from up here, because we're going to arbitrarily stop the panel at 4.30, so that we can get back up to our table for any last minute stuff. And it's going to be really hectic because it's the end of the show. Um, but a couple of minutes of introduction. A lot of you have been reading ElfQuest for a long, long time. We've been doing ElfQuest for, this is a 36th year. and. What we have seen at this show is a lot of people coming up and saying, oh, I love ElfQuest. I have read everything you've ever done, meaning I've read the original quest. Right. Or I've read the original quest and Siege and Kings, but stopped there. And for whatever reason, they don't know that we've told a lot more ElfQuest since then. On ElfQuest.com, there's close to 7,000 pages of ElfQuest that we have put up there just so people could read it for free and catch up because we're not finished. The next big story arc is called The Final Quest, and we have partnered with Dark Horse Comics for them to publish it both in print, on paper, and digitally. But when we ask people, have you seen the newest ElfQuest, some of them get this, there's more deer in headlights kind of look. <laughs> so that's what Final Quest is. It's the next big chapter. It's not the end of ElfQuest. It can't be. There's future quest. I mean, you know, we've already talked about the future of this world, and we know that at least some of the characters have survived. But Final Quest is what we're working on now, and it is a big, brawling, brutal story of conclusions and beginnings. Big, brawling, and brutal, but also very romantic. So, I mean, there's not much that we can talk about just off the cuff like this, other than telling you what has happened, and some of you have not read it yet. So we're going to toss the ball for the next few minutes back into your court, since you have committed your final hour of Emerald City 2014 to be here with us. Questions. What questions do you have for us? I'm not promising that we'll answer them or answer them in any linear fashion. But we're here, we're here for you for the next few minutes. Take your best shot. Okay. So uh, when I say that I've read all of Elfcrest, I, would, I have read basically everything on your website. I mean, there's still a couple of the side stories that are in black and white that I haven't read as much, but I've read Original Crest, uh, Siege at Blue Mountain, uh, Broken 
Kings of the Broken Wheel. Yeah, yeah. that um, shards, future quest, wave dancers. I've read basically everything except for some of the side stories. Mm -hmm. And now I have the. Uh, you answered one of my questions. I was asking if Final Quest is, you know, final, but obviously it's not. But um, in, at the end of issue one, something happens to one of the characters, and it just seems to come out of nowhere. There's an act of nature that happened. Do you mean the end of issue two? No, or of the, end, the end of the so prologue. Skywise. Oh, the end of the prologue. The Skywise. Yes. That just seemed to come out of nowhere, and it seemed to kind of be a little bit different than something you've done before. Let, let me tell you the story behind that. One hot, rainy summer afternoon, Richard and I were in our house in Poughkeepsie, New York, and it was a beautiful, beautiful thunderstorm, loud, and the rain was pouring, and we love that, and we love to watch that. So we went out on our front porch. Now, on either side of our house in New York, there is just nothing but lawn, broad, wide lawn. And we were listening to the thunder and holding hands, and it was all very wonderful. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, and I mean nowhere, kapow, not 30 feet away from us on our front lawn, a bolt of lightning struck. And you could smell the ozone, and your skin was crackling, and we had never experienced a feeling like that before in our lives, and we just stood there. And we realized that had that lightning bolt, had we been standing on the lawn to watch the thunderstorm, you wouldn't be here at this panel right now. It happens out of nowhere. You can go online and Google lightning strikes or people struck by lightning, and you can watch videos of it happening, just a person walking randomly across the street to a store or standing by their car or by the side of a lake. And, and the lightning could have gone anywhere, but it strikes them. And the point we wanted to make in the story is that there is absolutely nothing you can take for granted, not even if you're an elf. So yeah. it didn't just come out of nowhere. It came out of true life experience. Thank you. It's, it's, it's a, a tremendously powerful lesson to be taught. It's not one you set out to learn. It's one that <laughs> comes and presents itself in your face. Mm -hmm. um, live fully as you can because you just never know. It's not to say that we're afraid of the rainstorms or thunder or lightning, but always be aware that you just never know. So live life as completely and as fully as you can while you're here. And, uh, and the, very, the nice thing is that nobody was afraid because nobody knew it was coming. I'm referring to the two characters. And they were certainly living life to the fullest. <laughs> so, you know, if, if it has to happen, why not have it happen while you're dancing? You see? Um, Skywise is a character who has feelings that sometimes we don't see on the surface, but we all know he has deep feelings. <laughs> You're really, really empathetic with the characters, aren't you? <laughs> we love that. We, we love the way you guys feel with the characters. And so many people are saying to us nowadays, because we're doing a lot of interviews, you may have seen us doing an interview upstairs just now, just before we came down here. So many people are saying to us, the characters are so real, and it makes it so different from most comics. And um, we know you guys have known that all along, but, but people who actually write articles and blogs are starting to discover that too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's nice to have people starting to toot the horn a little bit, because mm -hmm. we've been tooting it you know, like pretty much on our own for 35 years. Mm -hmm. but. It's another, another reason why we're so happy to be working with Dark Horse because they have an amazing uh, bunch of people who know marketing and know, and, and know the internet and know all the different blog sites and review sites and so on and so forth. And we're busy 
telling the story and don't have time to go seeking all these things out, but they're doing it for us. And I think that's why, as a result, we're, we're seeing a lot of people who maybe had heard of ElfQuest up till now, but now because of all the noise that Dark Horse is making, they're actually discovering it. And then we hope that having discovered Final Quest, they'll go back and discover what you already know, <laughs> you know, the history and, and all the wonderfulness. Yeah. It looks like there's some folks there. Oh, it's a little high. Um, I've been reading ElfQuest since 1992, 1D1 maybe. Um, and I, I did go back and read everything on the website, even some of the goofy stuff by other writers and, and or at least other artists. Um, um, it's been a big part of my life. It's it's like there aren't that many comics I go back to reread, and ElfQuest is like number one mm -hmm. in the one that I've gone back and reread over and over and over again, and, and yeah, then like dug into all these little stories and things and. Like, where's there, there needs to be more wikis and more, <laughs> more stuff. Yeah, it's a world people like to yeah. visit. It, it, a lot of people find it very comforting. Yeah, and, and um, I, I, I have a billion questions, and so I'm just trying to think of one. Um, in reading, after reading um, The Discovery and Searcher and the Sword, I, I'm like back to the shocks of shards now with the, the final quest. It's, it's suddenly like like that that violence that happened to Skywise. It's and then in issue two it was like, oh crap! <laughs> <laughs> you gave it away on the cover, <laughs> but I was like, well yes and no. Well, I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But we tr I, we trusted a lot of you to get the signal, but yeah, a lot but of you it's, didn't. <laughs> it's already it's already this emotional roller coaster. I'm like, mm -hmm. it's the final quest. How many characters are going to get killed off before the end of it? <laughs> how many? How many do we have? <laughs> I don't know, 700. <laughs> yeah, so line no, them up. Uh, it, it, but it's, it's like... Now, oh. let me tell you something about Final Quest, um, and I, I am with you on this. <laughs> First of all, you guys know that we never kill off any characters arbitrarily. You also know that, unlike other comics com companies that shall go nameless, when we kill a character, it stays dead. It might be a ghost, however, <laughs> but that's about it. <laughs> however, dead for an elf doesn't necessarily mean gone forever, as you well know. Uh, uh, there's, a, there's a powerful spiritual side to Final Quest that I have been eager to get to for some time. We have the palace. We have ways of communicating with others that we've never had before. And we're going to see a lot more of that. You know, er, er, things are going to become much more blended. And you're going to see things going on with characters that you've known and loved for decades that you would never in your wildest dreams expect would happen with them. So yes, get ready for a huge roller coaster with, with steeper hills and valleys than you've ever ridden before when it comes to ElfQuest. <laughs> Thank you so much for this wonderful ride. Thank you. Thank you. And, and I, I, this occurs to me. Um, We've been telling the ElfQuest story now 35 plus years, and Final Quest is going to take you on a ride. What you're going to discover, though, people have asked us, they said, well, you've been telling this for so long. I mean, where do you get it? Are you just making it up as you go? And no, this isn't lost. No. Um, <laughs> it's the end of the show and he's not here. Uh, um, as you take this four-year journey with us, because that's about how long we think it's going to take doing a bi-monthly comic, giving it all that it's due, you're going to see stuff happening that's going to refer back to clues that were planted back in the original quest mm -hmm. as far back ag uh, ago as that. Mm -hmm. And so somebody says, oh, you know, you just made that up. And we're going to say, no, look back here in the original Warp Graphics issue number two. Do you see that little thing going on in the background? <laughs> and I made that up so you don't have to go scrambling back to... <laughs> You're gonna. Um, 
Yes, storytelling evolves and it mutates and it grows organically, but the skeleton, the basis of the story has been there from the very beginning. Now, neither one of us believe in telling a story before you know how it's going to end. Um, it, do, it doesn't really make sense, especially if you're following the hero's journey. That's a very specific journey to take. And you can have all sorts of convolutions and side trips, which we have certainly taken. But this is still a hero's journey, and it's got a full cycle to go through. And this wheel will not be broken. <laughs> so I yes. suppose my question is really based on a lot of what you just said is, um, as a writer, you know, I, I see my characters as kind of my baby. You know, how do you keep up, you know, the, the energy that it takes to give your characters life? Every character you create is a part of yourself. How do you live every day? How do you keep breathing? You see? Yeah. Every character, as much as they're your children, they are also pieces of you. So things happen to you every day. Every day that you live is a story. If you look back on your day, you can always start it with once upon a time. Once upon a time, so-and-so woke up, and she did this, and she did this, and she inter interacted with that person, and this went wrong, and this went right, and she learned that. See, that's the hero's journey. Every day is one. Thank you. I, I love your work. Well, Thank you. Well, there was another part to your question, though, which is also valid, which is how do you maintain the energy and who says that we do? <laughs> well, you've been I mean, doing for, it for so long. <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, other and people you, would you, have ended you just, it and given up and, you know. You don't, you don't get to see, <laughs> um, uh, um, um, unless we joke about it, those days when once upon a time we wake up and cannot abide the thought of looking at that keyboard <laughs> or looking at that Cintiq tablet. Yes. And you, 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 you either, you know, you have choices to make. Those you days are the are captain of your ship. They're usually reserved for Disneyland or something like yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> you say, no, I must do this. I'm going to commit to it. And you do it and you bull your way through it. Or you say, to heck with this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to Disneyland. Or, you know, but, but however you manage your energy is as much a part of it as where you find the energy. You have to follow your instincts. You have to listen to your gut impulses very, very closely. And if, there, if you are in a patch where you, nothing will come out of you, don't force it. You don't have to, because so it will self -care come. self-care is You take, you yes. take an thing. hour, <laughs> yeah. You are your own tool. Yeah. I mean, how is your story going to get done if you're not okay? So and a silly question. I couldn't find your booth. I couldn't find you guys where you're right there. You know, <laughs> it is in the program book in Artist Alley under the name Warp Graphics. We almost never use that when we're appearing at a show. It's either our names or something, yeah. ElfQuest, but it is booth E09. And... When we are done here, we're going to attempt to get back there and hopefully wrap up the show and, and in a nice way so that we all leave happy. <laughs> and, uh, yes? Hi. I have a question for you as, as writers, and this has to do with how you were saying Final Quest will bring some stories full circle. And I was just wondering, um, my mom calls it the Bible, so, like, how, how do you guys keep your Bible straight? How do you remember who's who? Oh, who we write where? treatments. You do what? And we write treatments. A treatment is a detailed uh, telling of the story in prose form, uh, not necessarily containing accurate dialogue or, or anything like that, but it simply just maps out the entire story, and you, and you continue to add to it as ideas come come to you in the bathtub or wherever, you know, you go back to your treatment and you add that idea. Uh, from the treatment then, um, and of course, 
do you want to talk about the birth of the treatment? Because well, we, t we talk it through first. We did. Um, yeah. The question was asked about the Bible, though, which I, c I consider to be a different thing. The Bible is that mass of stuff that has all the characters and all the backstories. You mean the gather them and all that? No, no, no. Or? A story Bible for a TV show. Okay, we, you know. we, we don't have that. We, well, we actually, never did that. actually, we do because you yeah. made a whole bunch of them. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> a Bible, you know. This is I Cutter. wrote treatments. This is Cutter. He looks like this. Oh, These are her oh, characters. Well, That's I... called the Bible. No, it's not. Yes, it is. <laughs> How long have you been trying to get a movie made and you don't know that it's called the Bible? <laughs> the Those encyclop... are called character charts. No. <laughs> no. So, so the Bible years... is the reference and sometimes we, you just have to let them be right <laughs> they want me um, we have 20,000 years of history we have close to a thousand characters most of whom have names and characteristics we have stories that go every which way and keeping track of them does take a lot of going back and rereading and making sure that we're not having a character do something which would be inconsistent with what has happened before. It's a lot of work and especially during that time when we had other writers and other artists doing other stories, I own this totally because mine's the editor's desk things weren't maybe as rigorous or as accurate as they might have been. What's happening now with Final Quest is that Wendy gets the chance to reshape some stories that have been told or have been started, but to do it in a totally consistent way with the direction that we want this arc to go. And going back to treatments, <laughs> The treatment for Final Quest was written in the mid-90s. It's that far back we, we were preparing to do this story. And we didn't know how we were going to do the story, whether we would still be publishing ourselves or working with another publisher, or perhaps we would just put it online. We didn't know how it was going to get out there. We just knew it was going to happen eventually. And the timing was perfect right now because um, after the option of ElfQuest by Warner Brothers ended, we were able to go ahead and finish our negotiations with Dark Horse Comics so that Dark Horse could begin to bring it out. It, the, the timing of it has just been perfect. And just one more note, I was an art major, and one mm -hmm. of the first things that I was drawing freehand to learn, like, practicing to draw real things. I was drawing Skywise and everybody You were practicing me. to draw real things by oh. drawing Skywise? Oh. Practicing doing things Are you other attempting than stick to imply that he's not? <laughs> he's <is> very real. <laughs> so, I, <laughs> but I just, I just wanted to say it was it was one of the first things I drew that my mom put up on the wall, not just the fridge, but on the wall. That's always and, an honor, isn't it? And uh, I just wanted to say thank you. You're, You're very, very welcome. welcome. And keep drawing, but draw from real life because you can't break the rules until you know them. <laughs> Hi there. Hi. Hi. Um, I started collecting ElfQuest when I was 14, and that was around 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. And I'm a bad fan because I haven't read any in the last 20 years. Don't boo me. <laughs> You're not a bad fan. <laughs> but um, you guys said something about a movie. Is there a possibility okay. of a movie? You knew this was going to come up. Yeah, I knew this was going to come up. And, and, and l l we, have, we have always loved fine animation. We grew up with it. Um, <clears throat> and, and, and Wendy's first love was animation. Not mm -hmm. comics, but animation. Mm -hmm. So... ElfQuest, the comics series, is her way of 
getting these characters as close to movement as it's possible to get without it actually being an animated film. If you look at the artwork that Wendy has done, you're not going to see any superhero posing. All of her artwork is characters caught mid-motion. They're moving on the paper even though they're locked in ink. Um, we have always had the dream of having an ElfQuest movie, and we have been to that altar half a dozen times, and we have been left at the altar half a dozen <laughs> times because every time somebody came to us and wooed us and said, we'll do that for you, we have discovered that they wanted to change it or they wanted to mm -hmm. make it their own or they wanted to do something with it that was just not right for ElfQuest. We would still love to see a movie. Right now, we're working with some people who are, you know, doing the homework and talking to other people. But it's not going to happen unless it's right. Mm -hmm. And whatever form it takes, we're going to like it. And we trust that because you've liked what we've done for 35 years, we're basically, you know, we're writing this for ourselves first, that you will like what we choose. Beyond that, there's no details, there's no facts, there's no numbers, there's no date, there's no, there's mm -hmm. just our own commitment that it's going to be good or it's not worth doing. I like to use the analogy of our friend Mike Mignola, the creator of Hellboy. Mike likes to say that there is Mike Mignola's Hellboy and then there is Guillermo del Toro's Hellboy. <laughs> <laughs> and pretty much the twain shall never meet. <laughs> yeah, and we, we would pra yeah. rather that there's not somebody else's elf quest yes. that you have to look at and say, well, at least I have these. I mean, we'd like them to be closer together. Well, yes. thank you, and you're my favorite guest. I was so excited that you guys were going to be here. Thank, thank you. Even you. though it's been so long that I've read it, you, your characters meant a lot to me. Well, catch up. Yeah. <laughs> Elfquest.com, it's not hard to remember. <laughs> I was just wondering, um, in a totally different vein, if there are any um, characters or stories that you wanted to include in the comics and online, but you know, for whatever reason, you know, you loved this particular character, but it just didn't fit what you needed it to do. And um, for example, no, it's more a case of now I'm working with characters who, who were, were conceived elsewhere mm -hmm. and otherwhere that I absolutely hate, but oh. I have to. Oh. <laughs> They are part of the canon, and I have to work with them and fall sure. in love with them. Okay. <laughs> I just wondered, uh, for the record, I love Strongbow and all things Strongbow. Mm. Okay. Who doesn't? Now that, that goes back to what I said earlier, that you know there are elements in Final Quest, and if you've kept up and, and read online or read in, when they were in print, there are elements of the story in Final Quest that were started by other people that we had a hand in, or so on and so forth. But the directions that they went in were not quite the directions that they need to go in. Mm -hmm. So Final Quest is our, I mean, it's not everyone who gets a chance to get it right. It wasn't wrong before, but no. it's, it's perfect now. Issue one of Final Quest is um, in part a retelling of the recognition storyline that came out, oh my goodness, about 10 years ago or more. Uh, and that storyline was told, interestingly enough, from the human's point of view, if you go back and read it or, or you recall it. Uh, it was very much the human characters were in the foreground and the elves were kind of in the background discussing it all. And, and that simply isn't the way I tell stories because ElfQuest is ElfQuest. It's about the elves. So, <laughs> so it was great. <laughs> yeah, uh, otherwise it would be human quest. But... Um, it was great to take the skeleton of that storyline and shift it around and retell it from the elves' point of view because it, it was very much where the story wanted to go, but we just need to be in the elves' world and see it from, through their eyes. So any other questions? Well, that was easy. <laughs> Well, um, yeah, 
what, what, what's going to happen now is we'll wrap this up and we will come down and we'll give you a photo op for a few seconds with Cutter and Lita. Mm -hmm. And um, then we will head back to our booth because it happens. End of the show, somebody comes up to us and says, I didn't know you were going to be here. Mm -hmm. And they've got something that they would like to say. And mm -hmm. we would like to close out Emerald City 2014 with everybody having at least a little, you know, good thing happen. So um, I'll just say ride with us. The, the prologue in the first two issues of Final Quest are out by Dark Horse. You can get it in comic shops. You can get it online from them. You can get it on your iPhone and your, your, your Android. Um, this is going to be the most spectacular wrapping up of one storyline that has ever been. We're, we've been doing it 30 plus years and it's tremendously exciting to us and we hope that you will take the ride with us. Just so thank don't you. take anything for granted. <laughs> oh yeah, fasten your seatbelts, it's gonna be a bumpy ride. <laughs> All right. Things up. 